Throne and Liberty, the MMORPG from NCSoft that has been in development for well over a decade, is finally due to release sometime in the first half of 2023. Now, while a half isn't as insightful as, say, a month or a quarter, plans for the release are moving forward. From a news article, which I will include in the description below, NCSoft is predicted to grow in 2023. They have a lot of games coming out, Project R, Project G, Blade and Soul S, but most of all, Throne in Liberty. The factor that determines the success or failure of Throne in Liberty is its business model. In fact, through the Throne in Liberty play videos that have been released, no gamers have questions about the content, such as graphics or large-scale battles. However, there are still concerns among gamers about the NCSoft business model. Now, I absolutely 100% disagree with the author of this article. There are a lot of questions about the content. Is the game traditional tab target or is it soft lock? If it's soft lock, is it more actiony soft lock or is it gimmicky action, which is just sort of placating the action audience? Are the large scale battles going to be buttery smooth or are they going to stutter like has been seen in some of those play videos? But absolutely, the author is correct. The biggest concerns are about the business model. And NCSoft, like all other Asian game companies, are finding that the monetization that works for the East is not well received in the West. Jake Song of XL Games has also said this. The director of Arc H2 has said, Asian companies need to understand what works in the East isn't well received in the West. Now, the hype for Throne in Liberty is massive. It caused the stock price to rise for NCSoft. They regained the title of number one in market capitalization. And executives from NCSoft have said they will adopt a business model that users can understand. They are changing the business model because there are no successful examples of pay to win games in the overseas market which is North America and Europe. In fact, NCSoft's Guild Wars series, which has been successful in the West, adopts a business model that minimizes probability type items. Now, this little snippet gives me some concern. There are two parts of pay to win. There are RNG loot boxes and there are pay to win, pay to advance, pay to dot 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 items. Absolutely, the author is correct. The Western world hates gotcha style probability type items. We do not like RNG boxes. We want to know what we're buying, what we're getting. We will put money on the register and we get the item we want. The problem with that is you can still have pay to win if you're able to buy power. Hopefully, NCSoft, XL Games, the other Asian developers understand what works for the Western audience is a monthly sub, a box price, and no cash shops. And we are willing to accept a little bit of limited cash shop if you look at World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. World of Warcraft has some pay to win, quote, pay to win material in it, but Final Fantasy is a cosmetic cash shop. People don't necessarily like it, but it's palatable, it's digestible. But the moment that you start having things like bag slots, inventory expansion, uh, XP potions, that's when the discussion of this is pay to win comes in. Hopefully NCSoft figures that out and doesn't include any of that in the Western release. Now, is there hope for pay to Throne in Liberty not being pay to win? It does sound like NCSoft has figured out what might work and what not might not work. And although they do have Project R, Project G, Blade and Solace, Throne in Liberty is going to be the driving factor for their short term success. NCSoft has to be aware that another pay to win MMORPG clown fiesta is not what they need. It's not what the genre needs, and it's not going to be accepted in the Western world. Now, as far as a publisher for Throne and Liberty, NCSoft is currently negotiating with Amazon for publishing and plans to, believe, plans to release it as a global one build. If that happens, it will be difficult to adopt a business model that includes excessive cash payments. 
Now, I know a lot of people are turned off by Amazon. They've been a really horrible developer. Uh, they've, they've totally screwed up New World. They've had a number of other games that have released and then been brought back into testing. Games have completely just been shut down and shuttered. Some people think Amazon should get out of game development. Some people think that Amazon should stick with simply game distribution. It is a little odd that NCSoft isn't choosing to do their own global distribution, but either way, one thing we can look forward to is Amazon has done very well at providing a distribution platform for Lost Ark. When all they're doing is being the publisher, they seem to excel at that. And it looks like if they were to be the publisher for NCSoft and execute what NCSoft wants, we could be in good shape. Now, NCSoft had a drop in performance and stock price with Blade & Soul 2's business model, which did include those excessive cash payments. They actually had a 4% decrease in sales and a 55% decrease in operating profit because Blade & 2, Blade and Soul 2 fell so short. Since NCSoft has experienced a major crisis such as a drop in performance and stock price with the Blade & Soul 2 business model, it seems difficult for Throne & Liberty to take this form of charging. Hopefully, NCSoft has learned their lessons with Blade & Soul 2 and isn't destined to repeat them. But what do you guys think? Can you accept a game with a box price and a monthly sub? Are you okay with pay to win? Are you okay with buying power if it doesn't have RNG boxes? Go ahead, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And with that, there is no more Throne in Liberty news today, so I will see you guys next time.